Hi, today we are back to discuss a topic that is difficult, that I have had <laughs> a long time to think about and God has been prompting me and telling me, hey, I'm giving you nuggets that you're supposed to share and I'm like, oh no, I can't do this, I'm scared of this. Eventually I had to say, hey Emily, get off your butt and do what you're supposed to do. And today I am discussing the altar of sex. And the reason why I'm discussing the altar of sex because I feel like there is an empty space of information that we are supposed to have about it that has not been given to us. And instead of us going to the Bible and discovering and finding out, we are only given easy things about what to do. But let's go back to the Bible and see what God says about all this. And in Genesis 1 28 it says God blessed them that was in the beginning after he made man and he said God blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground okay so that is what we were told to do be fruitful and multiply and guess what? If you read that verse, that was before there was a division of man. That was before the man named us woman. So there was just a man and he was told, be fruitful and multiply. So in a man, he had the ability to be fruitful and multiply without the division being made. But then God had to make that division so that there was an ability to actually do it. It was in us, but to make the ability to make it actually come to fruition, there was a division needed. <coughs> so, when God said be fruitful and multiply, yes, it meant sex. So, God created sex as a means of communing between a man and a woman, but not just between a man and a woman, between man, woman, and God. It is actually a secret act that we do. And it should be taken as secret. But what happens? Instead, we have sold into the idea of, oh, it's just sex. Oh, it's just this. We are not going to discover why God made this a secret act. And yes, we will be told it's for worship. Yes, it is. Oh, it's... it's um, it's um, it's a point for pleasure between a man and a woman. Yes, it is. But it's also a way to honor God. Because that is the only way that God recognizes that you are married. Not your ring. Not church. Not your um, going to register your marriage. No. God recognizes marriage in the act of sex. So ask yourself, how many times have you been married? <laughs> because you go, hey, hey, oh, they're married. Then you go, oh, no, not anymore. And also, how many times are you dishonoring marriage? Because you, 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 you think that the ring is the whole end all and be all. No, it's not. Why things are being difficult, you're not honoring marriage by doing how God recognizes marriage so you sit and say me and my husband we are okay we have not done anything for months but we're okay you're not honoring god check yourself but i'm not going to go into that now that will be for another time what i want to talk about now is we as a temple of god and the altar of sex so let's go back to the bible in corinthians it is First Corinthians, yes, First Corinthians, where is it? Oh, come on. First Corinthians 6, 19, and First Corinthians 6, 19, where is it? Uh, uh, come on, 6, 19, says, Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. 
we are a temple of God. And if you can think of the temple in the Old Testament, the temple where um, which Moses was given directions on creation, there was a temple that was made. And in that temple were altars. Okay? So can you imagine? You are a temple. You are the temple right now. So in you are altars. Let me give you an example. Clap offering. There was a clap offering. There was a wave offering, right? Hmm? There was an offering of praise. All those are, where are offerings done? At the altar. All those are offerings done. So you can imagine there's an offering from your eyes, from your ears, from your nose, from your hands, from your heart, what, do, what is in your heart, from your mind, what is in your mind, where do your feet go, that is an offering. All those are altars in a temple, the temple of God. And then the end all and be all of all altars is at your groin area. That is also an altar of sacrifice. What are altars for? Altars are for where we meet the Lord, where things are exchanged, and where we access the supernatural. It is a portal for accessing the supernatural. And let me tell you something about the altar around the growing area. You know the altars of old, they sacrificed at these altars. There was blood spilled. Think about it. The growing area, that is, the, the, the women spill blood every month. Virgins spill blood. That is why God has created a crucible for where even this virginity that you have is supposed to be lost. Okay? You can imagine how sacred virginity was considered all in the olden days. Why aren't we keeping that secretness about it anymore? Because somehow the devil has taken our mind to think, oh, we are modern, we are this. It is secret. Because as you spill blood, you open a portal. That is why you'll hear so many things, sacrifices, raping virgins, getting up, sleeping with virgins, which, witchcraft is being done around that. You'll hear a lot of um, perversion on kids around, sex, around sexuality. Why? Because they are still pure. Because they still have that door that opens and because this is a portal that is open to you it is a portal that helps you create guess what this is our creative area the groin is our creative area this brings me to something else we are called co-creators with god aren't we we are called co-creators and i would like to read for you something about the spirits of god you know as a temple of God, we, of the Holy Spirit, we hold in us the spirits of God. They are in us. But we should also know where they sit. Let me see. Where, where is the spirits of God? The spirits of God are... Um, the spirits of God are in Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah. I've forgotten the verse, Isaiah, the, where I talked about the root of Jesse and uh, the, where, the root out of the root out of the root of Jesse will come a branch and the branch will shoot and the spirit of God will be upon him. The spirit of might, no, the spirit of God, which is at the crown of our heads, the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, which is normally the those people who meditate and what call it the third eye. But the spirit of wisdom sits at our forehead. The spirit of understanding sits at our mouth. The spirit of counsel is in our heart. The spirit of knowledge is at our counsel is at our heart. Then might, sorry, is at our solar plexus. 
then knowledge is just below our belly button and the spirit of the fear of God is in our growing area. What is the fear of God? The fear of God is the reverence of Him. The looking at God and knowing that you revere Him. You're thinking, oh my God, you're awesome, you're amazing. And in that reverence of God is where His creative power is. The creative power that He shares with us. And why is the spirit of the fear of God so attacked? Let's go back to what the enemy wanted to do. And we find what the enemy wanted to do in Isaiah. Where is it? Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah, come to me. Isaiah, come to me. It is Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. And it says, how you have fallen from heaven, morning star. Son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heavens. Number one. I will raise my, I will raise my throne. Number two. Above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. Number three. Hmm? On the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds, number four. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will make myself like the most high. Those are the five are we, I wills of the devil. All these are wills are about taking the reverence, the praise, the exaltation, the honor that was given to God. That is what the enemy wants to do. That is why where the spirit of reverence sits is very important to the enemy. The spirit of reverence, which holds our creative power, sits at our groin. Hmm? So you can imagine, in you communing, you open up a portal. And instead of just looking at it like, ooh, it is for enjoyment, Oh, it's for procreation. Oh, it's for worship. Yes, it's for all those things. It is also opening up, opening up a portal into the supernatural for you. So that you know, at this place, I can co-create with God. I can decide what my child is going to be. I can decide what my world is going to look like. I can see in two what God sees in me in this place and I can bring it forth at this time. Instead of sitting back and thinking that it's just mere enjoyment, it's just a form of worship, it's just uh, coming together. Imagine it is the three of you coming together with God to co-create while which is bringing his kingdom down on earth from heaven that is what it's supposed to be about this is what you are supposed to tell your children so that they know my sexual organs are very important because in my sexual organs I have the power to shape my life according to what God wants me to be. Because that is my creative power. Who are you giving your creative power to? I said altars are a place of exchange. So this is a place of exchange. Hmm? So what are you exchanging? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what are you exchanging? God said you're a prophet. Then you're like, oh, I like that guy. He's so cute. He's there, 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 there. Bam. You go and sleep with a wizard. What are you exchanging? He's giving, he's, he's taking away your gift of prophecy. And he's going to use it in his wizardry. And then you find you're so dry. You can't see anymore. You can't do anything. Why? Because of what you have done. 
child. Child of God, wake up. Look at yourself. Know that you are a temple of God. Know that in the temple, sacrifice is made. Know that when you make a sacrifice, it's at an altar. Know that at that altar, it's a portal that opens into the supernatural. It is a place of exchange. I will tell you a story. There's a friend of mine who told me one time, he had just been paid his salary. So he goes out, man, you know, having fun, da 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 going. He met this girl, went and slept with him. And that is how his money disappeared. He said saying that he lacked money. He used to have a lot of people giving into his life money. But he lacked. They were not giving anymore. He was not seeing things coming to him. Why? There was an exchange made. He didn't know where she came from. So... He just went, he saw a pretty thing. And these are the problems that we face because there's always an exchange made. We are hearing about children being sold into sexual slavery. Things happening to them because they're in their pure state. Their portal opens easily and an exchange can be made. Can we watch what we are doing? Can we watch how we are doing things? You as an adult, even if you have had issues happening, this is your opportunity to go back and tell God to make you pure again. To go back and seek him. To go back and ask him to cleanse that part that your the spirit of the fear of God sits to cleanse it. Why is your gift of creation being destroyed, distorted? You need to a cleansing. And it's not difficult. God is always there saying that, I, just ask me, I'll do it. It's up to us to go back and ask him for an exchange, a, a cleaning, and he'll cleanse us out. Yeah. So, don't, don't, um, don't sit back thinking you're gone because you are an adult. You're gone. Things have happened. No, you still have something to do, and God still has something to do in you if you let Him. Especially because He expects us to co-create with Him. You know, He's sitting back and saying, "You know what?" I gave you all the raw materials. You're my sons. I gave you all the raw materials to create what you want. But how are you going to create anything if your spirit of creation has been defiled? You have to take it back to him to cleanse it out. Now, I'm not going to discuss spirits and exchange of spirits this time and all the, the things that can be exchanged. I'll do that next week. I just wanted to open up discussing this altar that is very difficult for people to talk about because it has been on my heart and I think it's about time we talked about it. So next time, Let's go and let's discuss the, the things that are exchanged. Let's discuss where your spirits are. Let's discuss how the spirits are in, in, involved and what happens. Have you ever heard of spirit children? Yes, I know you have. Eh? So let's even discuss that. When you come together, they only tell you that you, cre you can create a baby, but have they told you what you create without that happening? No. I'll just tell you one thing. I'll, I'll just leave you with one thing to think about. Remember at the beginning, in the beginning, what did God say? What seed did God give earth? It was a seed of word. Let there be. And there were trees. God didn't go planting uh, physical seeds. His seeds were words. And plants came out of the earth. His seeds were words and fish appeared in the sea. Okay? 
So there are actually very different types of seeds. And let me put it to you that even spiritual seeds exist. We shall discuss that next time. Um, I hope I've not frightened anyone. <laughs> so I will see you next week for another installment by the installment will be on this altar of sex. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.